My wife and I were watching a TV series called Outlander, which includes a woman who travels back in time. So my wife asked me, is time travel possible? And I said, well, we don't really know. This flow of time is very mysterious. Why does time progress? That has bothered people from Aristotle to Augustine to Einstein. My theory postulates that space and time are so tightly linked in general relativity that if you create more space, you're creating more time. If the expansion of the universe, starting with the Big Bang and now coasting ahead, is constantly creating more space, it must also be creating new time. And the newly created space is the space between the galaxies, and the newly created time is what we call now. Now, new time has just been created. If this theory is right, then we need a possible real test where we are creating new space. Just as I was finishing the book, along came LIGO. What they saw were two black holes, 30 times the mass of the sun, coming together in a collapsing event and making one huge big black hole. This creates gravity waves, so we see the gravity waves coming. When this happens, you are locally creating millions of square miles of new space. I said, if you're creating new space, you're creating new time. And I calculated how much it was. It turns out to be about a thousandth of a second. But we should see this pulse. And then as they come together, it becomes what they call a chirp. And then it's gone because now it's just one object. It's not emitting gravity waves anymore. But if we look at the timing and then the chirp, the chirp should be delayed by about a thousandth of a second because new time is being created when these two black holes get together. I think within the next few years, we're going to get such an event. When there's one that's closer, the signal will be stronger. When the signal is stronger, you'll be able to measure it to a tenth of a millisecond, and then we should see that added delay. And if we don't see it, the theory is wrong. And if we do see it, that's in support of the theory. As a scientist, I'm not satisfied with coming up with a clever explanation. We need to test it. The thing that will really gratify me is if the LIGO event shows that the time, the prediction that we make, turns out to be true. Then I'll go, wow. I, I, I'm looking forward to getting a phone call from them saying either, uh, gee, Rich, your, uh, your theory is wrong, sorry, or congratulations, you've just explained the flow of time. My wife asked me, is time travel possible? Suppose we could destroy space, get rid of it. Then time would go backwards, wouldn't it? The only way we have of destroying space very rapidly is in a phenomenon called black hole evaporation. From this new approach of understanding what time is, the bad news is no going back in time. This theory sounds very logical, but what it would need is new physics, explaining how time could be created now as a process relative to the energy and momentum of each object. And that is what the diagrams represent. For such a process to work, the low entropy, or high organization, that we had at the Big Bang would have to be unfolding here and now, forming the potential for increasing entropy or disorganization. In this theory, the potential for increasing entropy or disorganization is formed by a process of symmetry forming and breaking that is formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, photon energy. The electron is the most spherical object in the universe, and we have the future unfolding with each photon-electron interaction, with perfect symmetry between matter and antimatter, and positive and negative charge. Nothing has lower entropy or greater organization than a sphere. Therefore this process naturally forms 
the potential for disorganization or entropy that we have in the second law of thermodynamics. Each photon oscillation only occurs once, forming an uncertain future relative to the atoms of the periodic table. This can be explained as part of a geometrical process. We have an infinite number of line symmetries within a sphere that in this theory represents an infinite number of potential timelines, forming an infinity of possibilities at each moment in time. Such a process would not just form the potential for entropy or disorganization, it would also form the potential for ever greater symmetry formation that we see in the complexity and diversity of cell life. Photon energy forms the movement of positive and negative charge, with the build-up and distribution of charge being relative to the membrane of each living cell. At higher temperatures we have a phase change of matter, with charge, in the form of plasma, being able to cover a whole star or even a large area of interstellar space. An interior of a sphere naturally forms three dimensional space, and this dynamic process also gives us a geometrical reason for positive and negative charge, with the outer convex surface representing positive charge, and the inner concave surface representing negative charge. Whenever the atoms bond and break, there is an exchange of photon energy, with the movement of charge, and whenever objects touch, it is charge that makes contact. Therefore, this process forms the ever-changing world of our everyday life that we measure as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table. In this theory, the universe is a continuum of continuous creation with each object or life form always at the forefront of the creative process in the moment of now in the center of their own reference frame. Therefore, Professor Muller is right to say there is no going back in time, because we are creating our own time and our own future relative to the energy and momentum of our actions. This universal process is explained in much greater detail in my other videos. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.